Hello, welcome to Dr. Boyson's Reality Check. We'll be dealing with the topic, topic six, that is occupational stress and our occupational health and safety. So what is stress? Stress is defined as an adaptive response to a situation that is perceived as challenging or threatening to the person's well-being. And it could also be seen as a behavioral adjustment to change that affect the person psychologically and physically. And we're saying that stress is the person's reaction to a situation and not the situation itself. There are types of stress, and then these are two types of stress. The first type talks about the negative distress and negative stress, which is distress. And the second one talks about the positive stress, which is uterus. So it's exciting to know that stress has also positive effect, not just the negative aspects of it. So when we talk about distress, we are talking about the degree of physiological, psychological, and behavioral deviation from healthy functioning. And that gives, of course, negative consequences of stress. And the uterus refers to the healthy and positive constructive outcome of skillful events. An example is the positive side of stress. So we're saying that it is the stress experience in moderation enough to activate and motivate people to achieve their goals, change their environment, and succeed in life challenges. In other words, we need some amount of stress to grow and survive, and that is uh, uterus. And we have a couple of examples where uh, people say that they're able to function properly if they are under stress. They're able to do their best when they are subjected to some level of stress. So that is what we call the uterus, that the positive aspect of stress. So let's look at the causes of stress uh, at the workplace. And we call them stresses. The first one is the job content. A job content, uh, can cause stress and satisfaction to workers if the, the job is not well designed. It's likely to cause some sort of, I mean, stress. If, if a worker does something which is monotonous, uh, there is no excitement in it. Uh, it doesn't help the worker uh, to come out with its best. And as a result of that, this may lead to stress. And then also the load of work, okay? <clears throat> the load of work that is given to an employee can also cause I mean, stress. And it could be either way, whether the load of work, the, the, what is given to the employee is too low or too high, and the employee has a lot to do or has nothing to do, that can lead to stress. And then working hours, if, well not, if it is not well planned, can, could also lead to um, stress, okay? And, participation and control. And we, we, when we are talking about this, we are looking at both the positive and the negative aspect of it. So working hours could lead to uterus or distress. And participation and control uh, can also lead to that if workers are allowed maximum participation in decision making. And also the way workers are controlled procedures that and restrict workers from doing something. Others who are also given the leverage to do the things they want to do can also be a cause of stress. And career development, if workers are not allowed to, uh, there's no progression in the organization, they, they are where they are, and then if their status is not enhanced and they are, they are being paid very meager salaries, then these are likely uh, causes of what stress and then in the role of the employee in the organization if the employee is seen as somebody who is, is respected whose views are always welcome or he's seen as somebody who doesn't matter that becomes an issue if the employee feels very important or respected in the organization it also helps uh, with uh, uh, positive uh, negative uh, re uh, relief the negative, what, stress, that's distress. In the other way, if an employee's role is recognized, it could also lead, lead to, I mean, a uterus or, uh, sometimes the, the, if the employee is not recognized, 
out of that, something good can come out of I mean, that, that uh, form of stress. The interpersonal relationship can also lead to stress, either uterus or distress, depending on how the relationship are. If workers are left alone to do things on their own, if they are not, I mean, uh, added to the decision-making process, it becomes an issue. And if organizational culture has said that it doesn't allow inclusiveness, this is a, a possible cause of stress. And then home work interface can also cause serious stress to the um, employee because if your employee is not having a peace of mind to work, if there are issues that are from the house that are transported to the organization, then it becomes an issue. If work related issues are also taken home, then it also cause, may cause some chaos um, <coughs> at home, which may not inure to the benefit of the employee. And we have workplace bullying and then violence is also some uh, also another cause of stress when employee is being bullied in various ways and then uh, employee uh, other employees are violent against others. This could also cause a uh, stress to the employee. So, so we are looking at the 10 causes of workplace stress and these are uh, the work, workplace uh, uh, stress that can uh, inure to the benefit of the employee that is may lead to a uterus or may lead to a distress. So there are health implications of stress and these are seen in three perspectives. The physiological effect, the psychological effect and behavioral effect. For the physiological effect, we are looking at um, issues that has to uh, deal with the health of the, the employee. And, um, we are talking about issues like headaches, high, high blood pressure that uh, uh, might arise as a result of uh, distress, and then heart disease and other disease that can come up as a result of uh, uh, distress. And then we're also looking at psychological effect. And it could be anxiety, it could be serious depression or decrease in job satisfaction. And that, that can have uh, uh, serious implication on the worker and the behavior and as a result of the physiological effect or the psychological effect, especially the psychological effect that could lead to a certain behavior, the behavior effect that is workers might decide to take resort to alcoholism or take some hard drugs or chemicals and then there will be some sort of unnecessary quarrels and fights at the workplace duty. The, the health implication of what stress and these will be behavioral effects that are visible that uh, you will see being demonstrated by workers. So let's look at the effect of uh, stress. So we have two uh, ways of looking at it from the individual and also uh, from the organizational perspective. From the individual, we are saying that uh, at a point the individual become increasingly distressed and uh, annoyed, okay, because of the, the effect of stress, and they also become uh, unstable to relax or concentrate. They have difficulty of thinking logically, and they make, I mean, continuous mistakes when they are they are working. So just imagine an employee who is working with a factory machine where maybe a cutter that could be very dangerous if the employee is not concentrating, if the employee is under stress. And uh, as a result of that, some enjoy to work less and feel less committed to what they are doing. Yeah. Most of the time they feel tired, distressed, and, uh, and there is anxiety, okay? And others have difficulty of people sleeping. And these individual uh, effect of stress then has or have some sort of uh, detrimental effect on the organization. For instance, if an individual becomes distressed and annoyed, if the, the individual becomes, uh, uh, cannot concentrate and have difficulty of thinking logically and all that, it could lead to uh, these uh, effects in the organization. There will be increased uh, uh, absenteeism and decreased commitment to work increased staff turnover, workers might resign, and the cost of, uh, I mean, employing new workers will go high. Uh, so you have new people coming in 
another group of people living because of um, stress and impairing performance and productivity. Yes, when these things happen, there's absenteeism, there's lack of commitment, high staff turnover will lead to uh, uh, performance issues and productivity. So performance will be low, productivity will also be low. And the consequence of that, that uh, will be, um, uh, I mean, increase in the, the cost of production and then reduce uh, profit. Then there's also uh, the issue of unsafe working practices and accident rates due to the fact that workers are not able to concentrate and think logically. And you have a lot of complaints coming from customers and, and clients because they then are, the, <coughs> they are those who experience the effect of the stress when the workers are interfacing, interfacing with them. They are able, for instance, someone who works with a bank and who is a, a teller, my and stress and that person is stress up. You can imagine how that person uh, will serve its customers. Customers will complain. Um, the teller can be annoyed at any point in time and vent his or her anger um, on the on customers, and that could have detrimental effect on the organization. So uh, this will lead to increased liability to legal claims and action, especially when. These stress lead to accidents and some incidents in the organization that will cause um, some serious harm to the worker, where the organization has to pay some ransom uh, to, to compensate workers. So these are the effects of, of stress. And so we ask the question, how do we manage stress at the workplace uh, from the individual approach and also the organization approach? Well, from the individual approaches, we are looking at the individual taking care of himself and prioritizing and organizing himself at any point in time. Prioritize things that you have to do. You plan very well and you, you organize all the activities for the day. And then also there should be that kind of improvement in emotional intelligence. But what is emotional intelligence? It is how you deal with your emotion as and when these uh, emotions come up. And, is likely to have some effect on you. Some people are not able to manage their emotions. For instance, if they are angry, they are unable to manage it very well. But if you have improved emotional intelligence, then it means that at, at the time that you are stressed up, yeah, and then did that stress probably leading to other uh, psychological or physiological uh, effect, you will be able to manage it. For instance, the, the behavioral effect will be uh, you taking uh, resorting to alcoholism and all that. So an, in, an, an emotional intelligent worker will not go on that tangent because he knows that this is what stress is able to do. And then for that matter, he needs to manage the stand very well within the period where the stress uh, befalls that worker. And then uh, the last one is to seek social support. So. The worker decides to engage in some form of social activity at the workplace or even in his uh, environment, in his or her environment, so that uh, the worker will be able to use these activities to uh, distress. De so it's important that, um, for instance, um, um, the, the worker creates some sort of um, environment for. Uh, the individual creates some sort of environment for him or herself to make sure, to ensure that uh, uh, he would deal with the, the stressors and when they come. So this is from the individual perspective. But from the organization perspective, we are looking at friendly social climate uh, that the organization will create that environment. And then also in designing job, the factor these things in it so that job, the work will not be monotonous. The work will be said that people will not feel bored doing the work. And then that kind of participative decision-making approach uh, could be instituted so that workers will feel part of the decision-making process. They will feel respected. And also a kind of uh, an organizational communication that embodies all the workers that uh, a worker, any worker at any level could even book an appointment with the chief executive officer and have that kind of chat with, 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 with that, 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 that CEO. So there is that kind of cordiality amongst workers and 
Uh, we've not created any hierarchy or walls uh, within the organization where employees are not able to reach, I mean, other managers or other top, I mean, hierarchy people. And also we say wellness program can also enhance the, the or <coughs> mitigate or manage the stress. Most organizations have uh, gyms, uh, I mean, at, uh, uh, located I mean, close to where they be, uh, the factory is or where where the office is where uh, staff are able to take some time off and go and do some exercises just to i mean distress uh, other organizations have some uh, rooms where uh, workers can go there and do their critical thinking where they can listen to music and other things just to distress some also have um, some sort of uh, um, they have um, uh, people who who are counselors, where workers have issues, they 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 go to see these people to counsel. I mean them, and these are all wellness program to make sure that the organization mitigates the stress level that workers um, are or will have as a result of uh, working in that environment. Then there are also stress interventions, and these interventions are seen from three perspectives. Uh, from the primary level uh, and then the secondary level and then the tertiary level. We're saying that the, the uh, let, let's, let's, let's talk about what interventions are. So an intervention is a process of change uh, set in motion within uh, and in regard to work uh, organizations. And we are saying that uh, it is a change process put in place to help reduce and prevent or improve the occurrence of an event. So they are on three levels, the primary level, the secondary level, and then the tertiary level. So at the primary level, we are talking about um, the fact that this is concerned with taking action to modify, uh, eliminate sources of stress inherent in the workplace and the work environment. And thus, um, uh, this is aimed at reducing the negative impact of work-related stress on the worker. At the secondary level, we are looking at uh, issues concerned about the instant response and management of experienced stress, increase employees' awareness, knowledge, and coping strategies to enable them to deal effectively with stress condition at the workplace. So at the primary level, we look at the sources and then we put in measures to mitigate. At the secondary level, it's an instance response uh, to uh, the stress by managing it once the stress has happened. And then at the tertiary level, we bring curative approach to stress management for workers suffering from all illness as a result of work-related stress. So it's also concerned with minimizing the effect of the stress-related problems once they, they happen. So there are three levels of, I mean, these um, stress intervention. We are looking at the primary level where the sources are mitigated, the secondary level where it, uh, when the stress happens, immediately the organization put in uh, measures to mitigate it or to manage it. And the, the third one where, a curative approach actually is prescribed to managing, I mean, the stress, the worker's stress level. So that is done so that workers who are suffering from all illness as a result of work-related stress are dealt with. So for instance, if a worker, uh, for instance, is stressed up to the extent that the worker cannot work at all, probably they might, the organization might seek some serious medical attention for that worker to cure that, that stress. At the secondary level, it is managed, it's just a response to managing the rest as the, the stress as and when the stress happened. And the primary one looks at just the sources of stress and making sure that they are dealt with before the stress even happens. Thank you for your time. And don't forget, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel at Dr. Poison's reality check, and then don't for, uh, forget to click on the notification so we can send you videos as and when we come on YouTube. Thank you for your time and see you in the next lecture.